Well, part three. This is hope for the night that this gets physically bolted in. That's pretty much a certainty. If I can get help out here, it'll also be the night that I can get the transaxle back on it, get it actually hanging back on its mounts, and get everything at least a little more copacetti and closer to where it should be. I've got my brand new bolts for the flywheel and the clutch. Um, I've done the plugs. I've given this thing a once over. There's a couple more bolts I still have to transfer over. Uh, the front mount still has to bolt on. I'm missing a little coolant hose on the bottom there. Um, just a few other little things that I still have to transfer. But for the most part, she's ready to shove back in. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lift it off the lift cart. And I'm going to put it back on my trans jack. And then uh, start buttoning it up. And then slowly lifting it back into place. And bolting it where it uh, hopefully will be for the rest of the car's life. Knock on wood. But we will see. Well guys, I got the AC compressor bolted back on. Still got to hook up this little electrical connector here, which is right there. Apologies for the one-handed video that might not be perfect. All right, I'm gonna have to put this down to plug it in, but there's that. Uh, you got a vacuum port for your fuel pressure regulator that goes up right there. Since the AC compressor is in, you can go ahead and insert that. Um, this is for your mass airflow sensor, so we'll leave that up here. These plugs are all topside. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna plug this in real quick and then I'll come back with ya. So the surf belt's back on. I did transfer over this water hose. So looks like it's seen better days. I really hope I don't have to replace that in the car later, but I don't have another one. Um, and then here's the back side. I have the stock throttle body and plenum on it right now. I will transfer that over once I get it in the car. I'm just not in a huge rush to do it right now. Um, everything else is looking pretty good. Everything's in the right spot. Uh, I have run into a couple things that are different on this engine from the 2000. Uh, this has the EVE one uh, style three four pintle Bosch injectors, where the old engine actually has the two hole Bosch injectors. So it should atomize fuel a little bit better. Uh, other than that, uh, the engines look very comparable in wear and dirtiness and all that other crap. So I'm going to keep jacking this one up. Uh, eventually, my end goal is going to be bolt the uh, engine into the car. And then make sure it clears the, the subframe cradle right there. Now once I get to that point, uh, I'm going to have to get uh, another set of hands to help me lift the transaxle up here. Um, and then once the transaxle is in, I can uh, bolt the rest of the mounts, which actually carry the transaxle and the rear of the engine together. And we should be smooth sailing from there. Um, it's really not all that much to potentially get it running again. Uh, fairly shortly thereafter, but a lot of T's to cross, lots of I's to dot, so um, I'm just going to slowly start raising it up, um, trying to make sure everything is, you know, at least out of the way. Engine harness stays on top. The AC lines will clip into these right here. That's these lines. So far, I have not accidentally purged it, which is awesome. Uh, this seems like the way to do it, honestly. A lot of people will tell you to pull this compressor in the car. It's really hard to get at all the bolts, so... This seems like the right way to do it, but uh, this could still go horribly wrong at this point, so maybe don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, just going to keep right on going and shove her up on in there. All right, well, I've got the uh, old flywheel back on there with new flywheel bolts. You can kind of see them in there. Torque sequence on those is 19 foot-pounds and then 120 degrees because they are yield bolts. They're not reusable. Pressure plate bolts are not yield bolts. They're 17 foot-pounds. However, I still recommend replacing those. Uh, I did put thread locker on everything because I don't want it coming apart. Uh, front hoses are back in. Front mounts bolted back up. Uh, next step is to throw the transaxle in. Uh, I don't have a pair of hands here yet, but I have some coming. So I'm going to wait for that and see if there's anything I can connect that can actually reach down here doesn't look like there's a whole lot unfortunately but uh, definitely making some progress 
Oh my goodness. What a right kerfuffle. Um, I may try to inch the car down just ever so slightly, uh, get the transaxle more at uh, shoulder level. I'm gonna lift it up on my lift card here, sitting right there. The thing weighs like 150 pounds, so I'd rather not uh, have to go super duper crazy with it, uh, lifting it over my head or anything. But uh, again, definitely making progress. Looks like we should be doing just fine. Well, with the help of two friends and a lot of weird Canadian redneck YouTube videos, we got the transaxle in. All the bolts are hand threaded. Motor mounts threaded. This thing, although it's ratchet strapped to the engine, is not supporting anything anymore. Shift cable's on. Still have to put that protective uh, metal shield on there. Not really sure what that does. Thread in the motor mounts on the actual uh, chassis. Put this little retention clip back on the output flange of the transmission. There's a single 13, maybe it's a 10, can't tell. Put the slave cylinder up there. A uh, bunch of perimeter bell housing bolts, those are 17s. There's a triple square for no good reason. Another 17 down there with a nut on the back. And then a whole bunch more 17s. Uh, after that, I'll probably do the uh, half shafts and then go top side. Things I've already connected down here. Power steering pressure hose. Power steering return hose. Uh, vacuum for something. Radiator outlet, inlet, heater core. So yeah, kind of the order of operations. Slave cylinder, shift cable cover, CVs, motor mounts, top side plugs. Maybe put some headers on it, uh, connect the fuel rails, and then uh, throttle body and try to start it probably after we make sure there's oil in it. So I don't really know any of the history on this engine. The light will come on, right? Well, we got this thing back in, we think. Everything we can see is connected-ish. All this is more or less plugged in. The interior is extremely dirty from all the work. We can still see stuff. There's some cleaning occurring right now. Um, I do have four quarts of oil in it right now, which is not ideal. I just want to see if it'll start. Basically, if we have everything else hooked up. It's open headers, so it'll be loud if she goes. But, legitimate first try here. I'd say that's a win. Air high five. Air high five. Mint. High five. Perfect. All right. Uh, I'm not sure how much more I'll do tonight. Probably not very much. But yay, it runs! Yay! There was much rejoicing.